What's going on guys, my name is Renegade. Today we're here to ask and answer the question, how good is Chrono Dragon Knight? This is going to be a kind of a weird episode as Chrono Dragon Knight is a high damage focus class, but it doesn't have a heal. So basically all you can assess it for is its damage. And you pretty much can only use this class in the situation where you have someone else supporting you. Before we begin, I'll leave a poll linked in the description of this video where you can vote on what class you'd like to see in the series next. As you guys probably know by now, this series is where I do a comprehensive overview of the class in question. This includes how to obtain the class, what enhancements to use, what weapon range to use, what the abilities and passives do, how to use the class, how well it serves its designated purpose, and finally, I wrap things up with my own opinion on said class. If you'd like any other classes to receive this treatment, then let me know in the comment section down below, on Twitter or on Discord, links for all that are in the description. Either way though, let's start off the video by going over how to obtain Chrono Dragon Knight. Chrono Dragon Knight is actually a rare class. It was available as a bonus item with the 2015 calendar from Harimart. Unless you can find a code that came with the 2015 calendar, you cannot obtain this class anymore. If for some reason you redeemed the code but didn't know where to obtain the class, it's available from a shop in your book of lore. This class is damage focused as I mentioned before, which means that there's only one place to look in terms of the enhancements and that is damage. Whatever enhancement gives you the best damage output is going to be the best for the class. In this case, that would be full wizard enhancements. One thing that I don't generally do in these videos is recommend ore enhancements, but in this case, I'll be recommending that you use a spiral carve ore enhancement, which is obtained from Slash Join Museum. And just a disclaimer, all of the footage in this video was recorded while using a spiral carve enhancement. Weapon range is actually kind of tricky with this class. Like with enhancements, you need to be using whichever weapon range gives you the best damage output. Silent, who I went to for a lot of help on this class, um, tested the damage output using a stable weapon, a mid-stable weapon, and an unstable weapon, and he found that the stable weapon yielded the best results, and I'll further elaborate on that when explaining the class later on in the video. And before we get any further into the video, I'd just like to give a big thank you to my good friend Silent, who gave me heaps of help with, with this class, as well as in previous videos and stuff before. He's honestly my go-to guy just to talk about any class in the game, and he is super dedicated and stuff to classes in AQW, so he was really, really helpful for this. And pretty much most of the really uh, interesting details I'm giving in this video are coming from him, so I'll leave his Twitter in the description down below if you want to go give him some love there. Chrono Dragon Knight has two rank 4 passives and no rank 10 passive. Your two rank 4 passives are a Wisdom and Intellect increase by 10% and a Dodge Chance increase by 15%. Chrono Dragon Knight's ability number 1 is called Spellblade, it's just your auto attack. It has a 2 second cooldown and the description says deals spell damage and has additional effects based on what spells have been cast and in brackets it says magical damage and this is actually 150% magic damage. Ability number 2 is called Dragon's Rift. This consumes 5 mana, has a 4 second cooldown, deals light damage to the target and applies Temporal Rift to the caster, stacking up to 4 times and giving effects to your other abilities. Lasts 30 seconds unless restacked. Ability number 3 is called Rift Release. This ability consumes 20 mana, has a 10 second cooldown, Deals damage based on Temporal Rift stacks, must have one stack of Temporal Rift applied, but does not consume the stacks. You also gain Chrono Dragon's skin for 10 seconds, which reduces the damage you take by 30%. Ability number 4 is called Chrono Dragon's Blade. It consumes 25 mana, has an 8 second cooldown, applies flammable to the enemy, increasing spell damage taken by 15% for 15 seconds. Your auto attacks on enemies with flammable applied causes Dragon's Fire Dot that stacks up to 10 times, lasts 15 seconds unless restacked. And on this dot, dots tick twice as fast as normal AQW dots. Now it says increasing spell damage taken on your enemies by 15%, but when Silent and I were testing the class, he noticed that the 15% increase literally doesn't happen. The dot works as described in the tooltip, but the damage taken increase doesn't work. Now the dot is actually kind of confusing. When you use ability 4, it applies flammable to your enemy, which lasts 15 seconds. Every auto attack while flammable is applied does two things. One, it, it refreshes your dot on the enemy back up to 15 seconds, and it also stacks your dot's damage up to 10 times. This means that once, once flammable wears off, you still have a dot for about 15 more seconds, 
and so as a result one might think to use ability 4 every 15 seconds because of the damage taken increase, but the damage taken increase doesn't work, it's bugged, so it's best to use this ability every 25 seconds or so just to keep that dot applied. It's about 25 seconds because 15 seconds for flammable to wear off and then 15 seconds for the last stack of the Dragonfire dot to wear off as well. So that's 30 seconds total, but your auto attack sometimes is like a bit of a weird cooldown and you got a two second um, cooldown on that. So that might be 28 seconds. So just it's best to use it every 25 seconds if you're going to bother timing it. But uh, you, it, it, you could just use it every 15 seconds. It's probably not a big deal. Ability number five is kind of a shit show, uh, but I'll do my best to explain it here. Um, but I'll also go over it later in the video and explain like, the combo and how to use the class as a whole because the entire class is sort of centered around this ability here. So ability number 5 is called Time of the Dragon. It consumes 40 mana, has a 35 second cooldown, must have at least one stack of Temporal Rift to activate this ability, deals massive damage buffed by how much damage you have done while Temporal Rift was active in the past 10 seconds. This also consumes Temporal Rift stacks. So yeah, this ability is kind of really confusing, so I'll explain how it works in conjunction with all the rest of the abilities in the class. So, essentially you are building your Temporal Rift stacks, which is ability number 2, to 4 and then using ability 5. You don't want to use ability 5 without having Temporal Rift stacked at 4. You also want to deal as much damage as you can in the 10 seconds prior to using ability 5. So what you're going to do is you're going to have ability number 4 with the dot stacked as high as you can, which means that at some point you need to get that dot up to its highest point, which you probably should just have constantly anyway. Um, so, but if you haven't, then get that dot up, obviously. And then also in that 10 second window, because there's a 10 second window before you use ability 5 at which it counts all the damage, um, use ability 3 as well in that 10 second window. Now ability 3 has a 10 second cooldown, but when you're using uh, this class in conjunction with a class like Bard or Stonecrusher that increases your haste, you can actually use ability 3 twice before using ability 5. So I'd recommend, you know, planning that, thinking to yourself, you know, haste boost is on, I can use ability 3 more than once in that 10 second window, because when using this class in a situation without a haste boost, you can only use ability 3 once, um, but it still deals a lot of damage, so you still want to use it. Um, but if you can use it more than once in any situation, then I definitely would. Now, if you're confused about what I mean by the 10 second window, essentially, ability 5, how it works is it gets, as long as, and this is presuming you have 4 stacks of Temporal Rift, it gets the last 10 seconds worth of damage, counts it all up, including dot damage, and multiplies it by 3.77, and thank you to Silent for working that out. He spent a lot of time, you know, calculating all the multipliers and stuff, and I'll leave in the description, if I can remember the... Um, other multipliers for different stacks of Temporal Rift, but for four stacks of Temporal Rift, it's 3.77, which means that that 10 seconds worth of damage, add it all up, multiply it by 3.77, and that's going to be the damage you deal with your nuke. So it's a really, really big hit sometimes, and when you're using a when you're um, using this class alongside a class with a haste boost, then it's a really, really, really powerful uh, nuke there. And when it crits, it is even higher. You know, it's ridiculous. It's it's a really, really big hit. I've had, you know, 200, 300k hits with this class, and it's, it's just insane, honestly, how high you can get these hits. Probably, apart from, like, those weird, like, dot classes, you know, there are a couple of classes in the game where you can use, abuse glitches or, like, uh, like monster mechanics or whatever to abuse certain mechanics, but I think just purely just in terms of raw damage and raw hits this class has probably got the highest hits in the game um although they probably it's probably a class i've forgotten about or whatever but yeah that's pretty much how you use this class to to summarize stack uh your dot as high as you can as soon as you can in the fight stack temporal rift up to four stacks use ability three to get some extra damage for that 10 second window and then use ability five to maximize all that damage you dealt and put it into a really high nuke so how well does Chrono Dragon Knight serve its purpose of dealing damage? Well, it's a kind of a weird purpose, you know, I, I don't really think it's got like a specific sort of, you know, this class is for soloing, this class is for farming, it doesn't have like a specific sort of thing, it's just a, a class you can use in the right situation. I love classes like this by the way, and I'll, I'll explain a bit uh, on that later, but um, 
this class serves a specific purpose and that is to deal damage when being supported and that's a surprisingly common situation um, but if you combo this you know with the bard with a stone crusher with a uh, even just like a healer or something like that this class really shines and it's super super useful there are times when i've been fighting a boss and it's like you know what i'm gonna whip out chrono dragon knight and i'll ask someone else to use um you know stone crusher and bam we are just annihilating this boss and it's just super super powerful for that um, but for soloing, for farming, for anything else pretty much in the game where you're by yourself, it's a pretty shitty class and doesn't really do that well. But um, yeah, it serves that sort of specific purpose of dealing damage while supported really, really well. And I love this class for that. And finally, we'll wrap things up here with my own opinion on the class. You know, objectivity aside, you know, let's just look at the class, the design of it, and uh, what I personally think about what it tries to do. So. Uh, this class, it's kind of basic, it's not the most complicated thing in the game, and it really, you know, there are other classes in the game like Shadow Stalker of Time, which is also a calendar class, where, um, well, Shadow Walker of Time is technically the calendar class, but, you know, those classes, they seem to make you work really hard to get your damage, um, it's, well, specifically a Shadow Walker of Time, you know, it makes you work hard to try and get your, uh, your really high damage output. This class, eh, not so much. Honestly, if, even if you ignore the dot, kind of complexity of this class you know how there's kind of a little bit of complicated um stuff surrounding the dot and there's kind of some complicated stuff surrounding the 10 second window stuff even if you ignore all that and you just hit temporal rift four times and then just spam your abilities a little bit up in that little window you're still going to hit really hard you're still going to get some satisfying results and honestly because of that you know i love what this class tries to be i love the fact that it's trying to fill a specific purpose i i just love that in in this game it makes for really, really uh, interesting, um, you know, fights and stuff when you are using this class with other classes like Stone Crusher and stuff. But honestly, it's just kind of basic, and I feel like other classes um, serve not necessarily serve the purpose better, but are designed better. Maybe you know, it, it doesn't make you work very hard to get your, uh, you know, satisfying results. It's sort of, but at the same time, you know, I really love it because it is sort of that specific purpose. It sort of is that class that I've always talked about. You know, it's a glass cannon. It's super, super powerful, but it is, um, it, you do rely on other people to keep you going, which is fine, which is completely a great thing for this game. The fact that you rely on other people while using this class makes it super fun because it's like, you know, uh, you're, you're adding a whole bunch of more mechanics to your gameplay that wouldn't normally be there with a class that just sustains itself. So... On one hand, the class is kind of basic and doesn't make you work for it, but on the other hand, you know, this class fills a specific purpose and it makes your gameplay actually pretty fun. And, you know, hitting 200k crits is pretty fun. It's a pretty satisfying thing to do. So, overall, I'd say I like this class and I think it was worth it. Um, it's a, actually a real shame that this class is rare because it is kind of a really interesting class for me personally. But, uh, yeah, other than that, though, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.